Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Alvis. Good to see you today. Um, another beautiful day here in Denver, so let's get into this message. Um, today I'm asking the question, is patriarchy oppressing women? Okay, now what do I mean by patriarchy? Patriarchy in the Bible is where, you know, men were the head of the household, men were in charge of the finances. Um, like, for example, when your parents died, um, all the inheritance would go to the boys. You know, the, the firstborn boy would get a double portion and the rest was divided between the other boys. Um, and, you know, a young maiden, a young woman, she would be under her father's authority until she got married, until, until her father um, gave her away to her husband and then she was under her husband's authority, right? So it was men, men were in charge, men were in authority, you know, things like this, you know. And the reason I ask this question is because nowadays, um, women don't want to take their submissive role. You know, they feel like they can demand things of the man, almost like they're stripping the man of his, of his, of his rulership, of his authority, right? Almost as if it's a sin nowadays for a man to be in charge, you know? Now, I'm not talking about abuse, right? Patriarchy isn't about giving men the right to abuse women or rape women or cheat on women or beat their wives or, or commit adultery. No, that's not what patriarchy is, you know? It's about men just being in charge, you know, and woman, her position is to be submissive and being in, in the supportive role, right? Like, for example, um, when you go to work for a corporation, when you go get a job at one of these corporations, you know, they have rules, they have expectations, they have a business plan. They're the ones saying, hey, we're setting the program, and, and if you're not following our program, you're of no use to our company, right? You wouldn't be a good employee at a company if... Uh, if you were trying to tell them, no, uh, this is not one way we're going to run things, you know, I won't, you know what I mean? It would not work that way. Anyway, that's what patriarchy is. And, and I wanted to discuss how, you know, this relates to the third commandment in the Bible. You know, the third command of the Bible, uh, if you read Exodus chapter 20, verses 7, the Bible says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord God will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. You know, what does it mean to take the Lord's name in vain? You know, the word vain means conceited or egotistical. And somebody who's vain thinks of themselves more highly than they ought to, right? When I think of somebody who is vain, I think of a stereotypical woman, you know, staring at herself in the mirror, telling herself how beautiful she is and how mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, right? You know, but everybody else around her knows that she's stuck up. She's a stuck up person right <laughs> you know but but what does it mean to take the lord's name in vain right you know the lord's name he has a holy name he has the name above all names you know the most high you know it's it's so holy it's so holy that you're not even supposed to speak the lord's name unless you're giving him honor respect and reverence you know and that's why so many people when they think of this commandment in the bible they think of saying like oh my gosh or or you know some people say like Jesus Christ, you know, as like a curse word or when something bad happens, right? And they think that's what uh, it means to not take the Lord's name in vain. But, you know, um, that's only half of what this commandment's really saying. You see, the commandment's not telling us not to take the Lord's name, right? It's saying, do not take the Lord's name in vain. You know what I'm saying? So what does it mean to take the Lord's name, right? Think of it this way. When a woman gets married, she takes, or she's supposed to take, her husband's name, right? Whatever maiden name she had before when she was under her father, well now she's under her husband, she takes his name because he's supposed to be in charge of her, right? Her father has given her away in marriage and she's no longer his, so boom, she switches names. You see, as Christians, that's what we're supposed to be doing. You know, those of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, um, when we believe in God, when we submit to the Lord Jesus, we take his name. We're taking on the Lord's Jesus. That's why we're called Christians, you know, because we become Christ's property. You know, Jesus said, you know, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. You know, unless you take the name of God. You know, that's what it means to take the name of God. But, you know, we can also take the name of God in vain, right? Meaning... Um, you can't take God's name. So you, you, you can have, 
you can have other people look at you as if, you know, you're better now, right? Now, now that I'm a Christian and I took the Lord's name, well, I'm better than you because uh, I, I'm, I'm the son of God, right? Um, well, you know, people will say that, well, you think you're better just because you're Christian, right? You, you think you Christians all think that you're better than everybody else, you know? Um, and, you know, sometimes that may be true. Um, but anyway, um, that would be taking the Lord's name in vain, you know, or maybe, maybe you could, maybe you would take God's name and say, you know what, God, you know, if I take your name, if I believe in you, and this is what they call prosperity preaching, you know, you'll bless me, you'll make me rich, you'll, you'll heal my sickness, you'll do whatever, you know what I mean? And, you know, you might, you might only take the Lord's name, uh, because he might, because you expect him to bless you with something, right? Um, and, you know, that you always run the risk of, well, I only I only want to take the Lord's name um, uh, so I can go to heaven when I die. But, you know, I don't want to follow any of the commandments. That would be taking the Lord's name in vain, you see. And, you know, so many people are like this. You know, they want to take God's name, but they don't want to believe in God. They don't want to believe in the Bible. They don't want to um, do what God told, tells them to do unless, hey, uh, God, you show me a sign or you bless me or, uh, you know, you make me rich or whatever, right? Imagine a woman who marries a man just for his money, right? Imagine a woman who marries a man, she spends his money, she, uh, she takes his name, she lives in his household, but, you know, she doesn't want to submit to him. She doesn't want to obey his commandments, right? She doesn't want to accept that he's the boss, he's the ruler, he's the patriarch, right? She doesn't want to obey him when he tells her what to do. You know, this is the program, woman. And, you know, so long as he's not telling her to do something sinful or something, right? You know, she has a duty to uh, get, get on his program, right? If he says, hey, I want breakfast at, at 8 a.m., you know, boom. You, you should have breakfast ready at 8 a.m. or do your best to get it ready, right? You know, you know feminism um, is teaching women that submitting to a man the patriarchy is, is evil it's oppression right and they don't and and now they only want to use the man uh for what he, what they can benefit right i only want a man unless i can benefit something out of him right you know colossians 3 18 you know says that you know uh women are not supposed to do this right but too many women nowadays want to take their husband's name but they only want to use their name for their own benefit you know what what I'm getting out out of this is, you know, they want they don't want to serve their husband. You know, they don't want to be a wife. These women um, only want a man for what he can provide to them. You know, it's all vanity. They don't want to follow his program. It's all for their own benefit. What do I have to benefit out of this? Right. That's why you see so many women going after men who are um, CEOs, who are rich CEOs or something like that. Right. You see, when we take the Lord's name in vain. When we think we are entitled to be blessed by God just for no other reason than we took his name, you know, that's taking the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> I remember um, uh, the girl that I was with, she told me the same thing, you know, when, when she took my name and, and she was with me, you know, she thought she had the right to tell me how to treat her, like like as if she was going to run the program. She wanted... <laughs> She thought she was going to tell me when breakfast was going to be, was supposed to be served and things like this, right? That's not patriarchy. That's her bossing the man around, right? And that's not God's order, you know? Uh, God says that uh, a wife is supposed to be submissive to her husband. That, um, oh, oh man, the verse just left, left me. Maybe it'll come back. But anyway, but, you know, I, I was treating her the way that she... Um, or she was expecting me to treat her the way that she expected, right? And if I wasn't doing that, she'd get angry with me, she'd blame me, and then she'd think she's justified in throwing me in the doghouse or throwing me under the bus or whatever, right? You know, and I was thinking, woman, it's your job to serve me. That's what God created you for. You know, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 says, The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. You know, we see that God created Eve for, Matt, for, for Adam, you know, Eve's whole purpose is to serve Adam, you know, to help him, not for Adam to boss her around like a slave, but, you know, um, for them both to get along, she has to follow the program, right? So long as Adam's not telling her to do something sinful, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's her purpose. You know, let me give you an example. You know, I used to go to this church and, 
and and you know the pastor of this church I would say you know he was using the Lord's name to boss people around in the church you know like he came up to me one day and he gave me a commandment and a rule and he expected me to obey this and I was like well that violates my free will as a man right you are no better man than me and God did not give me that commandment right that commandment comes from you and you are using God's name God's holy name to boss me around you're not allowed to do that you see because this this commandment violated my own free will and 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 see the dynamic between me and the preacher is different than a dynamic between a husband and a wife see I was not taking uh, the the pastor's name right I'm not under the pastor's name I'm under God when you go to church you're under God's name and God has certain commandments for us that we have to obey certainly does but when a when a wife takes a husband's name well now he's the ruler right and and basically what I'm saying is this pastor misunderstood me for to be his woman right I am not your woman you do not tell me what to do you know what I'm saying but anyway you know I think that's why a lot of people don't go to church nowadays I, I know that's why I stopped going to that church you know because he was using the Lord's name in vain he was using the Lord to uh, boss people around in the church I'm not about that you know misusing the Lord's name take is taking his name in vain you know you, know, you see the point of my video today guys is to point out that a lot of women nowadays you know um, won't even take a man's name you know they'll get married to a man but they won't even take his name they won't they'll, they'll still use their maiden name right very disrespectful if you ask me and you know there, there's no excuse for these women nowadays to not get married you know a woman who's not married has no reason you know um, I remember in the old days if you weren't married by the age of 21 or, or you know if you weren't married young <laughs> society started looking at you and saying hey what's wrong with you why aren't you married you know because it, it should be your a woman's duty to find a man submit to that man and, and get on with the program because um you know the man he's he's trying to build something and if you're not helping him build you're you're helping tear him down that's all you're gonna do um so you know there's plenty of men to choose from so if you're not choosing from a man it probably means you're too proud you're too vain um you're looking for a husband in vain right you, you just want to use a man for his money or his status or his resources you know the truth is and I have no shame in saying this guys is that women who aren't married are not fulfilling their purpose in life they are not you know like I said women's purpose in life is to get married bear children guide the house that's what God said now and I understand a woman need uh, a woman's need to find a suitable husband uh, somebody who's um, compatible with them you know the best possible husband that she can get along with you know somebody that she can be friends with some somebody that um, you know has has the same uh, what do you call it um, uh, like qualities or interests interests there you go you know but you know a lot of women nowadays you know they're trying to qualify a man based on material things based on vain things like how you know how tall is he you know <laughs> uh, how good looking is he you know how um, much money does he make you know what I mean these are all vain glory these are all vain things you know and you know so a lot of um, men you know men do the same thing you know there's they, they seek a wife for all the wrong reasons you know um, men think well I only want a woman who's got you know a big old booty and big and, and big boobs and and she's got to look like a supermodel and you know all this this is vain uh vain things right things you should not be doing and you know some men even stop looking for a wife altogether too because they give up and they say well you know uh, <laughs> uh we, you know we can lie to ourselves and tell us or tell ourselves that we don't need a woman you know our life would be better without a woman um but you know the truth is is i you know god made women for a specific purpose and, and if she's following that purpose she'll be a very good blessing in your life she really will but if she's not following that purpose if she's if she's contending with you if she's not getting um on your program um then yeah you know uh it's not going to go well the relationship's not going to go well you know if she's always constantly demanding things of you you know uh unrealistic things things that she has no business uh, demanding of you it's not gonna end well um, you see God knows that 
he looks at us the same way that we look at women. You know, if you get a good woman, he, there's nothing better in your life, right? When she's obeying you and, 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 and helping you accomplish your mission in life, there's nothing better than a good woman standing by your side supporting you. And, and that's how God looks at us. You know, God says, you know, when you guys are obedient to me, when you're following my commandments and you're not taking my name in vain and you're not doing this just um, for how much I'm going to bless you or how rich I'm going to make you or whatever, right? Um, God says, you know what, there's no better blessing. There's no better blessing in God's eyes than when you submit to him, obey his commandments, and you don't just do it for your own benefit, but you do it because that's the right thing to do, to submit to God, to submit to his authority, right? And, you know, the Bible says not to take the Lord's name in vain, you know? So I'm going to close because this video is coming up on 15 minutes, way too long. Um, but, you know, First of all, what can women learn? Women can learn that, you know, their place is in the household, you know, serving their husbands, not expecting him to be rich or, or handsome or anything like that, but serving her husband as if it were the Lord himself, you know. And men, we need to open up our hearts, you know. We, we can't be afraid that the woman's going to take us uh, for granted, you know, and going to use us. And, you know, you got to be forgiving, you know. If your woman messes up and you know, you tell her to do something, you tell her to have breakfast ready at eight and she didn't have it ready, you know, you got to be forgiving, you know, and you got to forgive her, not for everything, I'm not saying let her go out and commit adultery, you know, that's not, you can't forgive that, but, you know, women, they have it just as hard as we do, you know, it's difficult for them to submit, you know, just like it's difficult for us to uh, submit to God the Father and obey His commandments, right, you know, you know, they get scared, you know, they want to feel safe and secure and they want to feel protected and, and taken care of and loved and cherished, you know, and sometimes they get angry because they feel so vulnerable and that, that they're not getting what they want, you know, so we got to be patient, guys, you know, that's what we need to learn how to do. Um, just like God is patient with us and, you know, we, we all need to make sure that we're not taking the Lord's name in vain right? We're, that we're not telling God, hey God, I'm only going to obey your commandments so long as you're blessing me. And if you're not blessing me the way I want you to bless me, then I'm not going to obey your commandments, you know? Um, I'm not going to follow you, Lord, unless I get what I want, right? You know what I mean? You know, God's not our employer, guys. You know, he's our God. He's our God. You know, we serve him no matter what, right? We serve him because it's the right thing to do. No matter what he says, even if we don't like it, we're going to do it anyways, right? Because he's not going to tell us to do something that we that, that's bad for us anyway, you know. Even if uh, he tells us to do something that's going to get people in the world to mock us and, and, and persecute us, you know, we still got to do it anyways because we don't serve God in vain. We don't take God's name in vain. We serve him because he's worthy and he's holy. Anyway, that's my message, guys. That's my message for the day. Um, this is Sean Elvis signing off. And as always, I'll be giving God the last word. You guys have a good day. God bless. Uh, I'm going to be reading from this, uh, the New Testament, um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Here we go. The Bible says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of plaited hair and of wearing of gold and putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs uh, together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing, knowing that ye thereunto are called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Amen. God bless.